Hey everyone and welcome back to Owen Luthery. This is video 7 in my series for the Great Guitar Build-Off 2020. So this is a bit of an interesting video because we didn't do very much work on the guitar. I've spent the entire week putting on coats upon coats of true oil, so there was no real woodwork. But what I am going to do for this video is I'm going to go through all of the different hardware that I'm using. And there is a little bit of woodwork and finessing to be done, so stay tuned for that. So grab yourself a cup of tea, get comfy, and enjoy. And don't forget, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon for to be notified anytime I release new videos. Like, comment, all of that good stuff. I still really, really appreciate it. Just before we start this video properly, it would be rude not to show you where we are. So this is after about 10 coats maybe of true oil. And we moved inside because it was getting pretty cold outside. You can see just there. That is our join of our binding. It's unfortunate how much it came up, but uh, I think it's all right. Down to our neck. And our lovely headstock. Now, there's no decal on the headstock just yet, but I have a water slide material coming, which I'll be using. So, currently, this has about 10 coats of true oil on it. And some days it needed a little bit of sanding back with 600 or 1000 grit. And this is as far as we are with it. There's definitely a nice, nice semi-gloss there. So I'll be leaving this to cure for the next week coming, at the end of which I will wet sand it to about 2,500. And then polish up with something I'm not quite sure just yet. And I think it will look fabulous. Anyway, on to the video. Now that we've seen where the guitar is, how it's coming along, and I think it's coming along pretty well, if I do say so myself, let's go over all of the parts that will be going on once the finish is cured somewhat. So we'll start off and take a look at the machine heads. And these guys are Schaller Da Vinci machine heads. And they're in chrome. We're going for an all chrome look. So we'll get a good look at these guys. There we go. They're nice. I love this window design where you can see the gear and the worm through it. It's really cool. And there's a beautiful action on them. Really lovely pieces of kit. Right in there, made in Germany. So they should be very, very nice. And then in underneath them, we have our, we have our washers and our little screws. Don't know what you'd call them exactly. Fixing screws. Because these guys have the pin on them to prevent them from spinning really. I love Schaller's box designs. They're just, they're just nice. Moving on next, we'll stick with Schaller. And this is the Signum Bridge. A little bit of a user guide. And the bridge itself. So again, really, really nice quality. A little grubby because I've had it out once or twice before. It's not grubby, it's just a little bit of dust on it. And right there again, made in Germany. 
And this is a cool design because this is where the ball ends actually go onto the bridge. So you string it in this way, out the back and over the bridge. So it's kind of like a wraparound. Loads and loads of room for intonation adjustment there. Yeah, it should be really, really nice. And grub screws to lock it in into the post. Under that, we have the posts themselves. Good, chunky, beefy posts. And a beautifully machined screw there. There is almost no play, which is what you want. Two of, oops. Spare grub screws there. Not entirely sure what they're for. And Allen key for adjusting them. And lastly, this really cool cranked wrench. I assume this is for these guys. Yeah, it is. That's <laughs> it's a really nice little tool, actually. All back nice and neat. And I can never get shawler boxes to close properly again. Well, bridge boxes, sorry. The tuners go back perfectly every time. Bridge, never. Just can't get them in neat. Okay, next up, let's have a look at the tuners. Because this has been a bit of a point of debate during the whole build. Should I have humbuckers? Should I have P90s? Or what? So, what I've gone for... And first of all, look at this seal. And have it focus there. Is that not just seriously cool? And this is from an Irish company called Wolfhound Audio. And that's his seal there. I've worked with Stephen before. I built him a guitar at the start of this year. And uh, I like his stuff. Screws there attached to the bottom of the, or to the, yeah, the bottom of the lid. And we have gone for humbucker sized P90s. <laughs> for the best of both worlds, because I love P90s. Absolutely love them. But I know not everyone does. So I decided if I can route the guitar for humbuckers, but still use my P90s. So they're nice, and I love these open covers. Absolutely love them. They're so classy, I think. And the black bobbins, and I specifically wanted the braided shield wire because, because I like it. So we've gone for an Alnico 2 in the bridge. And apparently this is coming in at 7.9k resistance. So that should be pretty sweet. And for the neck, we have an Alnico 5, which I believe that's saying 7.2. So, Wolfhand Audio. Go check them out. Next up, a little plug for myself. So this is one of my wiring looms that I will be posting for sale on my website. By the time this video comes out, these should be live. This is one for a 50 style Les Paul. And while I'm not gonna be using this exact one, I will be using one very, very similar. This one is 500K pots all around with 0.022 capacitors. These are orange caps. What I'll be using for this guitar, since it's P90s, is 500k pots for volume, but 250 for the tone. And I'll be using 033 tone caps. I think this is just a really nice setup for P90s. That's just it. But if you are interested in supporting the channel that little bit more, and which is something I obviously would really, really appreciate, consider heading over to the website and looking at one of these guys. I initially have a couple of fan favorites and some interesting mods available for a lot of our more popular instruments like a Les Paul, Telecaster, Stratocaster. 
and of course you can get in touch and I'll do custom ones of course. Next up, I want to make some pickup rings for these lovely Wolfhound Audio P90s. Since they are humbucker size P90s, I can simply make humbucker pickup rings. For the rings, I'm going to be using another offcut of oak. You know, I think this will look really, really nice when it's done. So to cut these out, I'm going to actually be using my little CNC over in the corner, which is absolutely a luxury tool, but in my opinion, it is worth it because the one I have, relatively cheap, but the accuracy and repeatability it gives me is fantastic. And this is what I get off the CNC. Nice, good looking pickup rings. And I also get these free inserts <laughs> that go into the middle of them like that, or that came out of the middle of them. But, you know, they'll be used later on down the line for truss art cover or something like that. So put them to the side, forget about them. Now these guys, and let me just grab a pickup. Let me show you how it fits nicely. And on it goes, so it's a good tight fit. But, you know, already it looks not bad. And I did notice the other side here has these kind of graduated staining. That one's not as, as prominent, but that might be nice. This side, good and clean though. So, you know, technically you could use them just like this, but I'm absolutely not going to use them just like this. But I'm gonna pop over to the drill press now and put a bit of a countersink onto the mounting holes.
Now the last step, of course, for all of these parts is a little bit of finish. And simply enough, I'm just using a nice clean cotton cloth to apply troil. Exact same as what's on the body. And there's no need to be stingy. And here's a little truss rod cover. Ah, that is gorgeous. Now I know all of the oak doesn't quite pop as much as, say, the horse chestnut, but uh, it's nice. And it'll give a beautiful contrast now once it's up against the horse chestnut properly. And it's important to make sure you get into the, all of those little holes. Now and that is that. Now I'll come back and try and get, you know, four or five coats onto these guys. Yeah, I'll keep going until I'm happy with it. And that is the end of this episode. I really hope you enjoyed this one. I know it was a bit slower paced than all of the other videos in it. And unfortunately, that's just the nature of the beast this week. This coming week, I'm going to be working on finishing off the guitar. That means doing frets and installing all the hardware, getting it set up to play. So next week, we should definitely have a sound demo, which that's pretty exciting. Uh, so thank you everyone for watching, hit like, hit subscribe, all of that good stuff, drop comments, the whole shebang, hit the bell icon for notifications for the next episode. And if you're only finding this for the first time, make sure to go back and check out all of the other videos in the series because it's a good one, I think. Thank you very much and see you again next week.